Good morning. This is Dr. Marion Carroll, and I'm at South Central Louisiana Technical College in Reserve, Louisiana. But not right now. Right now, I've just finished a nice cup of coffee at the maybe infamous but not so famous uh, Morning Call, which is a uh, cafe in the City Park in New Orleans. Let's see if you can see the sign there. And uh, I decided to, to come on out here to the park and um, finish what usually is my last lecture. Um, some of our oak trees out here are magnificent. So, it's a beautiful day, so I hope uh, uh, that I get to share some information with you comparable to this morning. It's a little wet, but uh, I got, found me a little dry spot here, and we're going to use this to talk about our last part, uh, it's a little part of uh, lecture 11. Part, um, part three. Okay, this is this is kind of what I use at home at my desk. A little little uh, stand and some paper, um, and of course. Eh, this is me. How you doing? I'm glad you endured 11 lectures, and I wish you well on your final. Hope you learned something. I uh, certainly enjoyed sharing it with you. And, uh, I might uh, try to do these again at some point, kind of uh, improve on the audio, and, uh, maybe add some more exciting details like my park. All right, let's get to work. All right, the last time we um, were talking, I think I may have in inadvertently uh, left out of the frame what I was writing but um, I think this is the uh, last part I was talking about regarding Bronsted Lowry acids and bases and how in this example here water is in equilibrium with hydrogen ion and hydroxide ion and uh, the hydrogen ion is usually uh, in a polar um, hydrogen bond with water giving us H3O or a hydronium ion and the hydroxide ion is our poly uh, atomic anion. The um, acid as the Bronsted Lowry is defined the acid is the uh, proton donor and proton we're referring to the hydrogen uh, and the base is a proton acceptor and so um, this is our definition of a Bronsted Lowry uh, we talked already talked about Lewis acids which are electron pair uh, acceptors and uh, Lewis bases which are electron pair donors and then the Arrhenius acids and bases, uh, the acids increase hydrogen ion concentration and the base increase hydroxide ion concentration. So there's some very uh, similar properties associated with Arrhenius acids and bases uh, and the Bronsted-Lowry definition. Well, let's move on to uh, talk about buffers. Uh, buffers are a very important uh, particularly in chemistry involving uh, 
uh, biological organisms, uh, because what a buffer does, a buffer is a solution that resists changes in pH. Okay, so if you uh, have a buffer, what you have is a solution that if you try to add acid to it, the pH will stay the same. If you try to add base to it, the pH will stay the same to a point. And matter of fact, the boundaries, the range of a uh, buffer is plus or minus one pH unit. And so that means that if I have a buffer at pH 5, then the buffer range is plus 1, pH 6, to minus 1, pH of 4. Okay, so that would be considered the range. So the buffer would be optimum at pH 5, of course, in the middle. And at these extended ranges, this is the um, area that will act as a buffer. In other words, it will help, it will continue to resist the change in pH, the dramatic changes in pH between 4 and 6. Okay, obviously there's a change here of two pH units, uh, which in some systems is, is very dangerous. But usually we try to use a buffer at its optimum pH, which is equivalent to its pK. We'll talk about that briefly here in a, in a minute. You won't have to know how uh, this is uh, defined, but uh, I will mention it because it's, it's part of understanding the buffer. So, um, the strength of acid or base uh, depends on its ability to donate or accept protons in the Bronsted-Lowry definition. So, um, if you have uh, the ability to, uh, high ability to donate a proton, you become a very uh, strong acid, so like uh, hydrogen iodide, it's a very strong acid. It's much stronger than hydrogen chloride, which is much greater than the hydronium ion, which is also an acid. You can donate that proton and hydrogen, and which is much stronger than uh, ammonia. Okay, which can also uh, act as a uh, base because it can accept a proton. So likewise bases, so these are the, the acid strengths. And these are just a few. Uh, remember what we talked about, strong acids, uh, completely ionized. HCl goes to um, the hydrogen ion plus the chloride ion. And um, the strength of a base is similar, similarly you find, only that, let's see, let me pause for a second. Okay, as I was saying, base strength is similarly defined, only we're talking about the um, ability of the compound to um, Except proton. So the ammonia, obviously, is the weakest acid, but it's the strongest base in this case. Water uh, is the next strongest uh, of the next one. Chloride ion, which would be considered the conjugate base. Of this acid. And 
then iodine. So all the acids and bases kind of work the same way. They complement each other. The conjugate for the uh, hydrogen iodide would be your iodide ion. And then the conjugate for our chloride, uh, hydrogen chloride would be our chloride ion and so forth. Um, there's a table that I passed out just to give you an illustration of the different strengths. But in some uh, cases, the acid-base reaction is not like the hydrogen chloride where it completely uh, ionizes. Okay, it only goes in one direction. Some acids and bases go in, uh, are in equilibrium. Uh, a very good example of that is acetic acid. Acetic acid is in water, okay, is in equilibrium with its conjugate base. And you can guess it, it's the base, conjugate base. It's the acid form minus the hydrogen, okay, because we lost the hydrogen. Uh, and we, of course, form the hydronium ion. But this is the conjugate base of the weak acid. Alright, so the weak acid now generates a conjugate base. Uh, in the illustration I talked about here, the strong acid and, and its conjugate, technically this is really not a conjugate base because they're not in equilibrium. But the idea is the same. When we lose a proton, we form a, uh, a base that's capable of accepting. And then some acids, some weak acids, are capable of accepting this proton um, very, rare, very, very readily. So when we have a situation where a weak acid is in solution, uh, we can draw, and I'll draw this for your illustration, a titration curve to sort of to illustrate the buffer capacity of a uh, of any buffer. Uh, the titration curve for any buffer will have the same profile that I'm going to describe because again a buffer will work plus or minus one pH unit of the pK or of the um, optimum pH for the buffer so in this illustration if I have a buffer at pH 5.0 and I'm adding uh, some base to that buffer and the buffer is acetic acid. All right, that, that means that if at the lowest pH, let's say at a pH of about 3, this is pH on the y-axis, and this is adding uh, equivalents or milliliter equivalents of hydroxide ion, the uh, pH of 3, we're going to see our acetic acid uh, fully protonated in its acidic form. As we add the base, the pH will go up. You know, we'll go through uh, 3.5, we get to 4. When we get to 4, you'll start seeing the pH level off. Okay? That means it stops changing that ra rapidly, very rapidly because this is the beginning, as we said, this is the minus one uh, unit of the buffer range. As we continue to add the base, the pH doesn't, doesn't change. 4.5, 5.0, we reach a, a, a center point, okay? This midpoint is where we have our optimum buffer. All right, and as we continue to add base, 
the buffer goes up slightly 5.5 6.0 until it reaches you see that a, a point where pH starts to increase very rapidly as we increase the buffer so this 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 profile here sorry it's going through my label kind of gives us an illustration of how a buffer works the range goes from 4 up to 6 this is the plus 1 pH unit All right, this is the minus 1 pH unit and in the center here we have a pH of 5 which is the point in which our acid a weak acid COOH is in equilibrium with our conjugate base CH3COO minus and up here above the buffer region our solution is completely uh, transformed into the conjugate base All right, so you see how this moves from the acid to the conjugate base but it goes through an equilibrium this pH is now equivalent to the pK which is also what we call the KEQ for the weak acid or um, instead of referring to KEQ as we talked about before equilibrium constant it specifically refers to KA for the weak acid equilibrium alright so that's what uh, we'll wrap up with and uh, hope that this has been informative um, good luck on your final and um, I appreciate you listening